Welcome one and all to my new review on the Jack and the Mac YouTube channel. Today we have a new record from Godspeed You Black Emperor. And this of course is the album No Title as of 13 February 2024, 28,340 dead. This album has of course gotten quite the reception as of late, largely due to political reasons and stuff like that. Anthony Fantano, the basically the main music head honcho, if you will, of YouTube. Didn't really give a score. I actually just watched his review. He basically just said, he basically repeated the death toll currently in the Palestine as of, um, as of now during the conflict. I didn't really say that well, but we'll go with it. Well, Spectrum Pulse made the whole review kind of more on the political side of things. Now, while, of course, I do think that they made some valid points, I do want to largely look more, you know, musically at the project. I am 14, don't really want to get into that space yet. And really, I don't want to ever, it's just not really my thing. So, how was the album? The album as a whole is, um, very bleak. I mean, or no, it's kind of like a mix. Like, it begins very bleak and it ends kind of very strong and ambitious or I don't know really how to word it it's kind of it, it ends very it begins very bleak and then it ends very trying you know basically saying we can do this and then eventually it ends kind of similarly to the, it begins it's a very weird cycle if you will it's a very big cycle a lot of which has been expressed by the Palestinian protesters both albums, of course, it is. I was also, I also written a comparison about Godspeed to say that, and of course, the previous album being slightly less bleak, but it is Godspeed we're talking about here. They basically always make very bleak albums, and if anything, I think the reason this reminds me so much of Skinny Fist is a lot of the points that um, were addressed in album, you know, the anti war sentiments, really have not changed. At the end, they were still dealing with a form of the war on terror, which is basically continued. Since I'd like to say the Gulf War, honestly, it's been insane. It's basically continued since the Soviet flag went down in Moscow, and honestly, even before then, as the Soviets were crumbling, um, as the Gulf War began. But yeah, overall, uh, this is a great album. Now, of course, getting to the musical side of things, "Babies in a Thundercloud" is probably my favorite track on the album. That is a great like build up. Uh, the follow through, and I guess you could say the pattern is really like kind of like you know, the little repeating is thrown you know, really good. I don't know. I'm not great with my reviews, in case you couldn't tell. I'm not great at describing things that I just listen to. It's tough. But I will admit, Babies in a Thundercloud, listen to yourself. Or is that how you spell it? Babies in a Thundercloud, yeah. Sorry, I have to check that. It has to be one of my favorite tracks of the year. Probably up there with The Invisible Man by Maruja. Anyone heard that? <coughs> or Capricorn by Vampire Weekend, which I actually heard an advert in the UK. I was on vacation there. It was very weird. My one complaint from the album has to be the weird transition track, Broken Spirals at Dead Capital, which really should have just been added to another track. I mean, let's be real here. It just isn't really, it doesn't stand on its own that much. Overall, this record feels like an amazing political record that strikes into the hearts, into the hearts of many, including myself to some extent. For my final rating, I'm going to go a decent to strong 9. Definitely their best album since Skinny Fist. Um, that is all. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And until then, see you next time.